Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros podcast. Who do we got on the show today, D'Anthony? Well, we've got, uh, you know, it's it's funny. I wanted to call him the, the rowdiest dude in Congress, to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, Crenshaw's over there, and he's actually murdered people. So it's hard to delineate, but we got Representative Matt Getz today from Florida. He's a uh, CNN correspondent. Yeah, CNN correspondent. Excuse me. I, we apologize. Sorry about that. Now, he's one of my favorite. Yeah, I think they've people canceled me over at CNN. I'm no longer like invited after they had to identify a few of their hosts from their dental records after their combative interviews with me. Uh, Man, see, that's you... why I like that's one of the two reasons I yeah. really like you. One, because you've got the balls just to get out there and, and mix it up with people. But two, you're one of the few people that I've followed through politics uh, that has actually done like you you've learned about mistakes in the past and fixed them not just for yourself but for the party in general like you were one of the first people to be out on the stump for things like legalization or at least decriminalization of marijuana like marriage equality and all this other stuff that was for no reason at all a big issue for conservatives back in the day it was just a divisive issue and you're like no that's stupid we're going to do it the right way and that's what i respect yeah, sometimes government's not about right or left. It's just about doing things in an effective way that's worthy of the people. And you're right, freedom is freaking popular, right? So if you have <laughs> de democratization of uh, access to cannabis for people who can live better lives with a medical program or you know just enjoying the freedom of adult use, I think that those are things that states should decide. Mm. And look, I've seen enough of Washington to know the people here aren't any smarter than the people anywhere else in America. Matter of fact, they're a lot dumber here in a many in many circumstances. So the more we can diffuse decisions out of this place, out of the real America, the better for this great country. Well, I mean, that's, uh, that's listen, the, he sets fire to the rain every single time. Yeah. You bring the thunder, he's, my he's man, and, and I love it. But all he's doing is paraphrasing the 10th Amendment, by the way. This shit was written 240 years ago. We should have already been... Like, we've, we should have handled this part already. No. But he's... Like, that's why we have to send normal human beings to Washington now and... and I feel it's like it's almost like sending people to war, to be honest, because that's a whole different world it, over there. Honestly, we need more young people like mm -hmm. this place is boring because it's full of too many old <laughs> bores. I mean, it's th this is a town run by the octogenarians and septuagenarians. And does anyone really think that people in their 70s and 80s are going to solve the generational challenges that, that <laughs> we have to work on? I mean, fortunately, Trump is America's oldest president, but also America's youngest president at, at heart. You know, he kind of approaches the job and the gig like a young man, whereas the rest of this crowd, you know, it's sometimes you got to like wake them up just to see that they're paying attention. Joe Biden's got to wake up his own crowds with smelling salts just to get them <laughs> interested in what he has to say. Joe, so, Bi Joe Biden has got to wake up in general. Yeah, I mean, he does. And, and I think I think you're right. Exactly what you said about the age thing, in particular with the Democratic Party, after Trump wins, um, they've got to blow up that party and start off, start, start afresh with, with younger people. If that's the AOC and you want to go that radical, fine. So be it, right? Um, but right now you've got uh, Schumer, who's what, 78, Pelosi, yep. who's 80, uh, Biden, who's 77. These are the, the, the three you know, horsemen that are leading this party. And it's like, Jesus, man, they're, they've got one foot in the grave. Um, you've, we've got to get younger as a country with politicians. I 100% I agree with you. Yeah, we should have a rule that if you know how to fold one of those maps that like our dads <laughs> used to have when we took a road trip, you should not be in leadership in the United States Congress if you know how to do that. I wonder, uh, there's an age uh, requirement to be president, right? Yes. And to be a congressman or a senator. Why isn't there an age limit? Uh, yeah, is that is that something you you would think about enforcing one day? Because uh, we've also talked about well, he, term limits as well. Yeah, term limits for sure. Yeah. Oh no! I, look, we absolutely need to do term limits if for no other reason than to shorten sentences. What happens is that people that are dynamic actually want to go and do other stuff in their life, and the people that stick around for twenty or thirty years, the ones like for whom this is the most power they will ever have, this is the most stimulating environment they could ever possibly experience, and like. You know, when it comes to just like the generational challenges that we got to work on, like, hey, I know young people in this country that want to make sure that the environment is clean. That doesn't mean we're ready to like give up on straws, planes, cheeseburgers uh, and everything else that, you know, would be banned in AOC's Green New Deal. But that doesn't mean that we can't embrace like realistic 
mm. conservation oriented approaches to cleaner energy, cleaner land. Yeah, you know, I think the boomers have largely failed America when it comes to ensuring that America stays splendid and beautiful. I consider myself part of the America first political movement. And you can't be America first if you would allow America to be filthy. I, yeah, sure. I agree 100%. Um, obviously, since you're on the show today, uh, and this is a hot topic, uh, with the recent passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, the Democrats are asking, it was, it was the dying wish of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, apparently, that uh, we wait for the next president. The problem is, I think the next president is going to be Trump anyways. Yeah. Um, wh where, where do you sit well, with not... uh, getting RBG uh, seat replaced here? By the uh, way, I don't, well, I, I, don't know I, which, in... I don't know which subsection it is that gives legal authority to someone's dying wish in the Constitution, but I'm trying, I've been trying to find it all night. I Can't find it. Yeah. Can't find yeah, it. Yeah, no, you, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, I missed the day in constitutional law. <laughs> while we went over the dying wish section. Uh, you know, if, uh, I far preferred Ginsburg's uh, wishes and views regarding the need for only nine justices on the Supreme Court. Uh, hell, you got the Democrats in Congress wanting to go back to FDR's court packing strategy mm. now because they're not getting their way. The bottom line is we, the Republicans, have the power and we better use it. For far too long, the Republicans, like the way that they fight is like the marquee of Queensberry rules. And we've been paired against an angry pack of rabid hyenas. The Democrats know how to fight. I'll give it to them. I mean, they're out there sending out millions of ballots to dead people or people who have moved because they're going to go to try create uncertainty after the election because President Trump's going to win on, on Election Day. So our side needs to absolutely bow up and get ready to approve the president's nominee to the court. If we don't, our own voters will punish us. But if we do, I think they're going to overreact. I mean, Brett Kavanaugh was a pretty square dude, and they made him out to be like some sort of drunk gang rapist. Yeah. Imagine what they're going to do to the next person. And I think that it really backfired on him when they did it to Kavanaugh, and it probably will again. Yeah, and I, and I thought it was important to replace uh, Justice Ginsburg with another woman mm. uh, simply for the fact of you, you're not going to be able to bring that up, any form of Me Too situation, because that's what Democrats uh, typically lean on in yeah. situations like this. Yeah, I think these. they had some job applications out on uh, Indeed for uh, accusers for whomever the next nominee is. And I if believe, it's yeah. a female, good luck. Yeah, right? good luck. I mean, we'll uh, see. Trump said it is going to be a female. The yeah. two leading candidates, uh, what, from what we've heard, uh, and, and tell me if you've heard otherwise, uh, is the woman from uh, Colorado and the, uh, the woman from Florida. The one that I follow is Barbara Lagoa. Mm -hmm. that's, that's who I personally like. But uh, Amy, uh, what's her name? Amy Barrett and Barbara Barrett. Lagoa, yeah. I think, are at the top of the president's <laughs> list. Both fantastic jurists. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I think back to the Republicans who were against Trump, like would they have preferred Hillary Clinton to make these Supreme Court picks? You wouldn't be talking about a woman candidate. Hillary Clinton would be pushed to have the first genderless candidate on the Supreme Court. Like it would be some sort of like woke topia crazed stuff that we'd be dealing with. Donald Trump now has reshaped the Supreme Court for a generation at the conclusion of this pick. And once that justice is seated. And I think that that vindicates the work a lot of us did to get this guy elected. And I can only imagine what's going to happen in the Senate in the second term. I mean, they've already impeached the guy. He took the best shot they had. He keeps moving forward, moving our country forward, moving our economy forward. And I'm excited about what the America First movement looks like, not only in this next term of Trump, but beyond where we ignite a new generation of patriotic leaders. Same. And I, and I think we need more guys like you in there. Are you on the ballot this upcoming election on November 3rd? Yeah, I'm on the ballot. Uh, yep. I've got I've got an election back in Florida. Uh, fortunately, every time I've run, uh, the voters have put their trust in me and I do my best to be worthy of that trust. But I tell you, like when it comes to the types of political candidates, if we want fighters, we're going to have to accept imperfect people. You know, I write in my book, Firebrand, that like the place you find firebrands isn't always like in the Agora wearing white. We need people who know how to mix it up will come to Congress not to just be part of this place, but to actually do something. And sometimes that means, you know, people who've said something that's controversial or done something that's controversial. And I think in the era of Trump, we are all going to be more accepting of flawed humans, but people who deeply love the country and are willing to fight to protect and defend her. Yeah. You know, speaking of controversy, uh, you're down in Florida, obviously. Um, Laura Loomer 
uh, has won her primary there, and she'll also be on the ballot this November. What are your thoughts on Laura Loomer if she gets elected? Um, you know, especially since she's the most banned woman on the planet. That's her uh, tagline. Are you a fan of of people like that when you're when you're talking about firebrands getting in there uh, who you know might not be perfect, uh, as you say? W would you be fine with Laura Loomer getting in there? I'm team Loomer. I've endorsed Laura Loomer for Congress. Obviously, I don't agree with everything that she's ever said or done, but I don't think that ought to be the standard anymore. Give me a Laura Loomer over a hundred of these people who don't come to Washington to fight, who just live off of the checks of political action committees, who get their spouses and relatives hired for no show, show jobs with big tech as big tech shadow bans the rest of us that are out there telling the truth. We got enough sellouts in Congress. I want more firebrands and I would count Laura Loomer among them. I would too. And I think, you know, when she won her primary and it was a landslide, uh, to me, it was a precursor of the election in Florida, because right now, you know, Florida is a big swing state, yeah. uh, according to the media. To me, I, I don't view it as a swing state. I think Florida is absolutely going to remain red for Trump in this next election. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Eight and a half million people voted in the last Florida election. DeSantis was elected governor by only 30,000 votes. We've elected presidents with less than 600 votes in Florida. So I never take it for granted. Trump won the state by 130,000 votes. And I think you're right. He's probably going to win it by more this time. And I think, again, the main reason is because you've got a lot of these Hispanics in Miami-Dade County that look at the neo-Marxist, anti-American Black Lives Matter movement, and they are not here for it. It kind of reminds them of... of uh, where they where they fled from yeah Atlanta. exactly yeah, like, exactly nope. you're talking about people who are just a generation or two removed from like actual socialism yeah. where there's no food to eat and people will show up and kill your family if you talk bad about the government so they see what's going on in seattle and portland and they don't want to bring that to florida or the rest of america and so i think you're going to see joe biden substantially underperforming with hispanics in texas in arizona and in the great state of florida since since you're in there and you're in this fight every day do you guys get better polling numbers than us dummies here in, in, in Gen Pop? Uh, because when I read these polls every day, they are so far off, in my opinion, that it is shocking. But we, I, look, we host a, a huge show with 9 million listeners, and we have some people in the White House that we're friends with. So we're able to separate and block out the, the, the white noise of these fake polls. The Do you get the better noise? polling on the inside? Um, yeah, so polling has changed dramatically because a lot of pollsters um, are not blending enough with cell phones, with digital media, because we communicate differently. I mean, I, I can't even remember the last time I saw a landline, much, much less got on one, but that still contributes to a great deal of the data they're collecting. So then you're getting like a, a, a myopic view of that particular universe. But like the other thing is, a lot of the president's voters just don't want to get into it on the phone with somebody who asks them how they're going to vote because we see the way the mainstream media, the radical left, just try to weaponize our politics against us. Hillary Clinton started that with the whole deplorables reference. Mm -hmm. And now I just think you got a lot of the president's supporters that are like, look, you know, I see the way you call the president a racist, homophobic, xenophobic, all these crazy things. And I don't want you to call me those things, but I can speak with my vote. And I think those people, the forgotten men and women in this country, are going to show up again on Election Day and they're going to give Donald Trump another four years. And I'm telling you, this place is going to be crazy because he will be no holds barred, draining the swamp, advancing the revolution. And I think paving the way for even more progress where we put our country and our people first. I'm tired of getting in these wars wars that exist just for lobbyists and defense contractors to get rich at the expense of the blood of some of our bravest patriots. And I'm tired of corporate America trying to bring illegal aliens across the border just so that they can capitalize on cheap labor. Putting America first means putting our people first. Those are the policies that I think this president is going to embrace with great vigor in his second term. I agree. Um, and, you know, I, we stated on the show last week that I, I feel that after he gets reelected on, on November 3rd, because I'm, I'm pretty certain of it, uh, I, I think the violence will escalate, however. Um, and I know that's been a big theme of this election, uh, in, in particular with the Democratic Party. Um, what do you see happening after Trump wins? Because uh, to me, I, I think people take to the streets again in some of these cities. Uh, look, Portland and Seattle, that, that's probably going to persist until they yeah. get snowed out. Um, what do you think is going to happen on that night? Because I'm with you. 
November 3rd, there is going to be a winner. I don't buy this notion of the media that it's going to take three weeks or till the end of the year to try to figure this out. No, I think Trump will have the Electoral College wrapped up on that night, probably by midnight. Um, and he'll be given a victory speech somewhere between midnight and 1230. And I think after that, people take to the streets. Are you in the same camp or do you think there will be some sense of normalcy among Democrats where they're like, ah, we'll go back to work for the first time in 100 days? You know, I hope you're wrong, but it's hard to argue against you. Look, I have been to places in the world where political violence is absolutely necessary if people want to earn their own freedom and their own self-determination. But America is not a place where people need to engage in political violence. I reject it categorically from every side. Uh, I do think, though, there is a strategy on the part of the, of the Democrats to try to create this window of confusion after the election. So even if Trump's winning, even if he's secured the Electoral College, they can undermine the legitimacy of his presidency. Remember, that was what the whole Russia hoax was about. Mm -hmm. That was never real. The whole deal with the Russia hoax is they didn't want to debate the president on trade, on foreign policy, on infrastructure, on taxes. They wanted to delegitimize him. And frankly, no matter what your politics are, that's pretty sad for our country. Like we ought to be able as fellow Americans who love one another and love our country to be able to disagree on how to make the country better without always trying to deplatform, demoralize and delegitimize the other side. They're not confident enough in their arguments. And so I think we could see just the dynamic you described where Trump is up on election day, they're hunting more ballots. And in that, that pendency of time, they deploy their Antifa thugs to the streets. Yeah, I think uh, it's essentially the political version of an ad hominem attack, right? Mm -hmm. And that is a logical um, fallacy. That's the word, yeah. Yep. Dumb. It's just, it's confusion. I've always said, actually, since all this uh, hubbub started back in the day, I always say, uh, and, and with regard to the media especially, if someone is trying to divide you, then they are trying to conquer you. That one follows the other. That's a correlative uh, relationship right there. That's why the phrase divide and conquer exists, and it's existed for about 6,000 years, actually. So anytime I see anybody trying to divide me like that, like split people into groups, like, hey, you're, you're this race and you're this religion, and you guys shouldn't, like, don't, don't look or act like them or talk like them or... or like engage in their culture at all because that's theirs. You can't do that. No, we're one race of people. And if we don't start acting like it, we're just going to keep murdering each other. It's stupid. We've reached a point in society where we've jettisoned a lot of the old stupid behaviors, the tribalism, but it still persists. And I don't know, maybe we can't get rid of it, but I feel like at this point in human history, we should be smart enough to do that. Yeah, do you don't think, you think that you think this we generation gives us that opportunity? I really do. See, to me, we have the most socially connected inner gen generation in all of human history. We share our slutty Halloween costumes with each other. We share <laughs> every bad moment. Like, who needs the CIA when you've got drunk Facebooking, right? Exactly. So, I mean, like, I think that there is like a certain acceptance of each other's flaws that uh, will help our politics. You know, you guys may remember the congresswoman that got run out of this place because her ex released some naked pictures of her, Katie Hill from yeah. California. Mm -hmm. Because she was having was threesomes. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Yeah, well, right. So my point is, like, yes, yeah, some people are different and weird, but rather than castigate them and like claim some moral high horse, why not evaluate their job performance? And how about go after the dirtbag that was releasing those photos of her? To me, that was the person that we should have been more critical of, not our coworker who was being victimized. So I, I wrote a chapter called Revenge, Porn, Chivalry. And like, I asked the question, like, what would we know about our parents if they'd have been boomeranging through oh, Woodstock boy. or like dropping acid <laughs> on Snapchat, right? Like what we know about our parents yeah. is like that they all would stand on in Sunday's best and take like that family photo, our kids are going to be able to see the body paint that we wore to Coachella. And I think just maybe that may make us all a little more accepting of each other. I hope so. I hope so too. Um, uh, speaking of your book, it is, it is out today. Firebrand. Uh, yeah. Firebrand, uh, dispatches from the front lines of the MAGA revolution. Uh, what made you want to write this book? Trumpism has to survive Trump. For this to be an enduring movement, we cannot go back to the days of the Bushes or the Cheneys or the Romneys or even a lot of the losing policies embraced by John McCain. You know, I think that Trump represents a political realignment in our country. He was willing to take on the establishment of both parties. He was willing to take on the media when the media would always just screw Republicans over by setting the frame. Trump rejects the frame. He shatters it. He dominates the airspace. And I think that that, that approach 
to igniting a populist revolution in our country, to take on the lobbyists and special interests, to make Washington more responsive to the needs of the people, uh, that has to live beyond this president. And so this is my invitation to people to join in the fights that matter against the cancel culture, against big tech, against endless wars. And, and also we need to realize that like for our generations to succeed, we have to beat China. Like we don't, we don't have to go and beat like some Iranian mullah that happens to be like really oppressive to their people in some distant desert. The people we have to beat are the Chinese that are working on quantum computing and artificial intelligence that I think want to turn a lot of the rest of the world into the Uyghur population that they currently have in concentration camps. Right. So I think a more focused set of policies will uh, certainly draw people to this Trump realignment for another generation. On that China thing, by the way, this is exactly how America, what, what China's doing right now is exactly how America won the Cold War against Russia. Mm -hmm. So there was... Uh, uh, Containment and then uh, detente and then rollback. Rollback is when Reagan started to spending defense monies, the Star Wars program, which is not even real. All right. this other stuff, and they outspent the Russians and broke their economy. That's what China's going to do to us. Yes. Like that's their plan. It's as plain as day. Right? Why, don't, why don't people understand how dangerous China is, in your opinion? I mean, it just happened 30 years ago. Why can we not remember well, this? You know, like the, it's really funny. In Washington, the Republicans are telling you that China's the problem, and the Democrats are telling you that Russia's the problem. So here would be what I would say to most Americans look around your house. How many of those products were made in Russia? You know, and they, like they, look, Russia has basically two main exports, oil and models. And America has plenty of both. So like Russia has never met less in my lifetime than they do right now. Yeah. But, but you know what? A lot of these old foreign policy hacks that want jobs and think tanks in Washington, like Chinese is a hard language to learn, man. They already know all the Russia stuff. So they want to, they want to bring us back to the foreign policy of the 80s because it's good for them. China or Russia is a like commoditized economy in a demographic tailspin. Mm. Meanwhile, Han Chinese is quite literally the default setting for the human race. Like there's a billion of them, you know, so yeah. when, when you're one in a million in China, there's still 130,000 just like you. And my, susp <laughs> you know, my suspicion Jeez. is that a, a greater focus on that will ensure that we have more resilient policies. I'm so glad the president is trying to ban TikTok. We should not have the Chinese Communist Party in the living rooms of Americans collecting surveillance. We shouldn't have Chinese drones flying in our skies. And we shouldn't allow Chinese companies like BGI to map our genetics and get information through companies like 23andMe to determine the vulnerabilities of Americans at the cellular level. Yeah, I agree. Um, let me ask you this. Any thoughts for, for possibly running for president yourself one day? Um, hey, man. <laughs> you're one of the most entertaining figures in the Republican Party, and uh, you seem to be getting a lot of the press every single time you go out and speak. There is always a great soundbite from you, and let's face it, that's today's <laughs> political world. Whoever can provide this, the best sound bites is winning right now. Um, is that yeah. something in your future? Well, uh, to the issue of being entertaining in politics, I absolutely plead guilty. Uh, but <laughs> in, you know, in Congress, like they try to convince you to go to an empty floor in the House of Representatives oh, yeah. and speak for hours to nobody. And I think those people look insane. Robert's I think rules it's of far order and all that stuff is crazy to go me. on you know, go on platforms like yours, engage mm -hmm. and excite people. I think we only should elect one president at a time. And I'm working on electing Donald Trump. But, you know, who knows what the future holds for any of us if we're able to keep the energy and the momentum going. And I do think that our party needs to be led by someone who can captivate the attention of the American people and inspire us to our greatest heights. I mean, we saw, we've we seen it two <laughs> elections in a row now. You, If you nominate somebody that's not a populist at this point, I don't think you're going to be able to win frankly, Me and it, which is crazy. The, the idea that we refer to a politician as a populist politician, and it's some kind of like aberration. That's every politician should be a populist politician. Why would you not be? That's the fucking job. Yeah. Like, what are you doing with your life? Well, I know what you're doing. You're well, amassing power. Well, no, they're power pouring out to special interests is yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. I and mean, they come up here and all they're worried about is getting paid and getting laid. And I'm not against either of those things. I just don't think you should sell your country out for them. Yeah, I, I look, I 100% agree. Um, and I, I personally think the future of the party is in pretty good hands with guys like mm. you, Dan Crenshaw, mm. Nikki Haley. Um, she's exciting. Who else is out there uh, that that maybe you're friends with uh, on the inside that a lot of people don't know about? 
Oh man, you know, we got, we got a guy from New York named Lee Zeldin. Uh, he represents the district uh, up there in like the Hamptons. And first of all, you always definitely want to be friends with the guy who represents the Hamptons. <laughs> but, but, but beyond that, like he is in a district that's like a 50-50 district, but he's a firebrand. He goes out and fights for the president. And not as many folks know him as may know me or Jim Jordan or uh, some of the folks you see on television as much. But he would be one I would watch as a potential great leader for our party, maybe a future Speaker of the House. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought up Jim Jordan, uh, another guy who gets a lot of sound bites. Him and Rand Paul. What's Rand Paul like behind the scenes? Rand Paul is actually a really cool dude, which is not only a hard thing to say about a senator, it's a hard thing to say about a doctor. But, <laughs> but like Rand, other than Ted Cruz, might be one of the most like personally disliked people in the Senate mm. because he actually makes them do their job. He makes them show up and vote. Mm. He calls them out for the BS spending. And so like Rand can't always go hang out with uh, his other senators. So sometimes he'll come over and slum it with some of us in the house. And, uh, <laughs> I really enjoy our time together. By the way, like how did we know that the Donald Trump wasn't movement wasn't different in his treatment of Rand Paul in the first debate? Remember, like everybody else is like, oh, I've been a governor. I've been a senator. And Trump's opening statement in the first debate was like Rand Paul's not at five percent. You clearly had to be five percent to be here. You should not be allowed. Like we should have all known at that moment, we were we were seeing something very different. Well, yeah, and and if you do well in those debates, because I've read varying reports of uh, the debates really don't matter, or whatever. They they live forever, and and like you were saying, like I'll never forget when uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren took out uh, Bloomberg. In less than five oh, minutes, yeah. she ended his presidency. Yeah. And let, it's, it was, yeah. I mean, one of the yeah, most. No, she slowly fed Michael Bloomberg into mm. a wood chipper, and we all got to watch. <laughs> <laughs> one of the most, uh, like, of the most remembered live TV events in history, obviously, uh, uh, what's his name? Jack Ruby shooting Har Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald, yeah. But one of them is Nixon just pouring sweat at the debates, right? Yeah. Like everybody that was alive then or that's seen any kind of documentary remembers that stuff. And the so guy taking out his, his uh, hearing aids <laughs> yeah. in, uh, in the 90s was yeah. great. Um, Admiral Stockdale, probably. Yes, Stockdale, yeah. yeah. yeah he was. Uh, that is a solid Admiral Stockdale, vice presidential nominee for Ro Ross Perot yep. reference. Boom. You You're guys right. strike me as a very pro-Ross Perot crowd. Well, God you know, look. Uh, I, we, I, we, I actually we, am. Yeah. Uh, because, but he was too much of a fucking dork to ever get elected people are it, at the end of the day say what you want about what this means about american politics or about humanity at large but it is something of a popularity contest it's not just about ideas because you also have to like the person uh and and you got to be cool you got to cool, have a little yeah. bit of coolness like when yeah. obama got elected and, and, and granted i'm certainly did not vote for him but i understood it um, I remember in 2008, because I was living in Los Angeles, seeing uh, the, the hype around it and the excitement around that candidate. And, uh, you know, I remember telling Republican friends of mine, I was like, dude, uh, you know, uh, McCain's got no shot at this. Yeah. None, none whatsoever. And I felt the well, same like, way when what Trump if was running. politics is just this? What if politics is as simple as this? The most interesting candidate wins, right? Like mm -hmm. Trump was more interesting mm -hmm. than Hillary. Obama was more interesting than Romney. Obama was more interesting than McCain. John Kerry was a total snooze. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Alert, George, fucking you know, George lurch. Bush from Texas was kind of a little more interesting and than Al him. Al Gore was definitely not exciting. <laughs> oh, Come yeah, on. Al Gore, you know, was like a, was like a sedative for America. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like if you, if you look at that and project forward, I think you got to feel pretty good about Trump in 2020. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody looks at Biden and say, is hanging on the edge of their seat to wonder what that guy's got to say next. We're just wondering if he knows where he is. Exactly. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, what he's got to say next, uh, we're six <laughs> days away from the debates. How do you think that's going to shake out? And will Biden be able to keep it together? Because, you know, a week ago during that last uh, uh, TED Talks or whatever, whatever he's doing on Zoom, I have no idea at this point. Um, Trump's out doing rallies. Uh, Biden's doing Zoom conferences. So I have no idea. What's it going to be like when he's actually on the stage against Trump for two hours? I mean, I believe they're going to pump him full of like at least 200 milligrams of Adderall and to try to see if they can like get him through a few hours. I see you nodding, right? Like you get, you get the deal. Like they're going to do anything they can just to keep this guy kind of upright and somewhat focused for a few hours. What I've said to the president is that uh, he shouldn't take him for granted. You know, a lot of presidents, they lose that first debate to a challenger because they think, well, hell, I've been president for four years. What does this other person know? But mm -hmm. like, you know, Romney beat Obama in that first debate. Kerry beat Bush in that first debate. So I've told the president, prepare, let's get ready. Let's go own the moment. Speaking of the moment, 
They just called votes in the Capitol, so I got to go take a vote. Oh, thanks hey, for coming on. We, we really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Go buy uh, Mr. Matt Gates's book, uh, Firebrand. It yep. is currently on sale. Uh, Amazon is the easiest to get that. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, shipping within two days, so you'll have nice. that at your house in two days. Well, thanks uh, for coming on, Congressman. We appreciate it. Yeah, this is fun. I hope you guys will have me back. Absolutely. Oh, we, we would Absolutely. love to. Anytime. You have a standing invitation. All right, take care, fellas. Thank yeah. you. Man, how great is Matt? He's uh, definitely one of my favorite politicians. You know, the audience knows I don't really swing one way or the other when it comes to political parties, but uh, he's one of my favorite because he's just a real dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. he's, he, like, like we discussed in the interview, he's one of the first guys in the Republican Party just to be like, why are you guys talking about this moralistic bullshit? Why do you care what people do in their bedrooms or when they get home? Why do you think weed is more dangerous than alcohol? He said all this stuff out loud, mm -hmm. which are not necessarily popular things for kind of waspy Republicans to say right. and, and Congress. And he didn't give a shit. He just said whatever he said. And, uh, you know, he's, he's somebody that's, that's kind of gracefully evolved on the issue without, like, you don't have to uh, be embarrassed for the rest of your life because you were wrong at some point. Everybody's wrong at some point. Then you get right. That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. Right. If you just shut somebody down that's wrong, they never learn anything. They just become entrenched in their position. And that's our current political climate. And he, for, for his aggressive in the Congress and in interviews as he is, he's actually a very thoughtful guy when it comes to that stuff. Like he makes a point to act that way and to be accepting of other people just for that very point. Right. And, and you know, that's what we're supposed to do as humans is evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're right. It's like, if you make mistakes, you should correct them. You should learn from them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, politics is one, you know, profession that uh, they will definitely not let you forget your mistakes no. every single day. Um, but uh, I enjoyed having him on the show. And that's, that's the type of dude where I would love to sit down with like for two hours with. Yeah, yeah. Because we get that from the audience all the time. Of like, hey, man, um, uh, who are the people that you'd really like? Like that interview right there. We just completed it. And uh, we're doing an extra show this week, a mm -hmm. bonus show. Um, and uh, we got some breaking news from the Brianna Taylor verdict, which we're going to say after the sponsors. But that guy I could have talked to for two hours. Um, he was mm -hmm. too busy for us in this occasion. Yeah, which, he, had to, he had to go vote. He had to go Congress, vote, which is awesome. Which is more important than anything <laughs> I will do today. Maybe. Obviously. Maybe, Dan. Well, I guess it depends on what he's voting Your for. Your dog was sick, you know? That's true. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's fine now. He's fine. But is that more important than a vote in Congress? Not really sure. Probably not, to be we honest. We don't know what they're voting on, to be honest. But uh, we're going to get to the Breonna Taylor news in a second. Of, of course, we've got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. D'Anthony. Uh, 30% off if you're a member of the military, a first responder, a teacher, or work in the government. It means Matt. Matt can get a 30% off a of bet if he wants. Yeah, it's true, yeah. I didn't even tell him that. Anybody in Congress. God damn it. There's, you always uh, think about the questions you don't ask. You there's know? 435, I think, or 438. 438 Congress people, and then there's uh, 100 senators. They're all eligible. All but of them. so are all of you at DHS and all the other stupid government agencies that shouldn't exist. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're all eligible for the, for the bet, so you yeah. might as well take advantage of it. But 30 if you're a teacher? 30% off. You're a teacher. Congratulations, man. Yeah. That's a fucking big this, this is probably a bigger deal to teachers than it is to government workers because uh, government workers uh, sham a lot, uh -huh. hide from work a lot. Yeah. Teachers, you can't really hide that much. No. There's all these little assholes running around. Well, uh, children, that's what they're called. That's so it's like, it, yeah. you know, it's difficult to hide from them. And Ghostbed recognized that children are horrible. Yep. And, and that, extended that, teachers that to teachers. Yeah. need uh, a nice night's sleep. Yeah. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Or as always, they get a 36 month pay as you go program, no interest. They're also giving two free pillows away with the purchase of a mattress right now. There is no better time to go get a mattress than today at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, D'Anthony. We've got GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. Nobody wants to talk about it. No. Nobody ever wants to talk about it. I mean, how do you even say that to your, let's say you're married. How do you tell your wife like, hey, my dick don't work. I mean, you can't I say don't. that. I lost my mojo. Nope. You don't. Right? That's what uh, Austin Powers used to say. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not going to say back. it in a shitty Austin uh, Powers accent. Sorry, honey. I'm just not feeling it, I believe, is, is one of them as well. Yeah. Like, oh, I've, got a, I've got a headache. Nope. No. no. You don't have a headache. What you've got is a dick ache. Yep. And you got to bone up, dude. Take a fucking boner pill from GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros today. They come in a very discreet package. Mm. So she's not going to know your dick doesn't work. No. Um, you can pop one of those down after uh, some salmon and uh, asparagus, whatever you're having for dinner mm. that night. You know, maybe you're on a keto diet. And uh, then you can get to boning. 
it's, the rest uh, of the night and weekend. It lingers for an extra day, by the way. It, uh, yeah, it does. In well, a I mean, great look, way. What, a great what, way. What a lot of these drugs do is uh, introduce more nitric oxide into your bloodstream. The guy that invented this originally actually won a Nobel Prize for it, mm -hmm. like the concept of it. But it's been modified a lot of ways for people with different conditions. But if you go to GetRoman.com slash Bros, you get fifteen percent off your first or fifteen dollars off your first order. Yeah, which is going to be probably twenty percent. Yeah. Or take it's great so it's, yeah it's a good it's a really good deal it's great go to get roman.com forward slash drinking bros today free shipping right yeah. yeah and you don't have to uh like go to a doctor's office or any of that nonsense free doctor yeah. visit online yeah. dude just check a couple boxes nobody's gonna be staring at you through a zoom either it's telemedicine now yeah it's all telemedicine brother it's the way of the future. last but not least we've got expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros it's funny man we were talking about uh, china with matt yeah. Uh, China is is trying to steal all of your data, um, and uh, there's no better protector than a VPN. You, everybody's got to have a VPN these days. Might as well get yours from expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros, or if you sign up for a year, you get three months free, and it's only seven bucks a month. Yeah, uh, do it just to be safe. Yeah, to be well, to be safe, and also to get your hands on all that uh, content from That's overseas. Right. Yeah. Here's the here's yeah. the deal. Like we always talk about. Uh, However you feel about this, we have a ton of fans in the military and in our in Drinking Bros in general that are huge anime fans. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Danny's wife, Tori, huge Victoria. She's, yeah, she yeah, loves yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a lot of people out there. You can't really get all of it here, right? And the same thing as these companies start to peel off certain rights for different uh, like longtime shows, like Friends and and yeah. and uh, what's the other one uh, that got pulled off at some part? The Office. Yeah, The Office. Yeah. You can still, they, those licenses are only for America. You can mm -hmm. still see those shows on those platforms in other countries. All you got to do is change your IP address. ExpressVPN kind of helps you spoof that, right? Yeah. Well, it's a VPN. It's what it does. It's, it's what it does. And yeah. you can actually go to their website, go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros, and they'll show you how to do it. Um, uh, so go there today and get on that. Uh, D'Anthony, the Brianna Taylor verdict is in right now. Right. Um, I want to pull this up because uh, we are catching this live. However, the show will air it. It's 8 o'clock tonight. Um, only one officer has been charged in this. Um, how, do I, how do you pronounce that? Is, is it the, the wanton? Wanton. Wanton. Uh, it's a strange word. Like and wanton I, disregard. You never heard that phrase? I actually have not. Um, and I, I, I am not familiar with this law. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain to the audience what this means? Um, so the grand jury has indicted one officer on criminal charges in the Brianna, Brianna Taylor case. Uh, again, to repeat, there's just one. People are currently protesting through the streets right now um, in Louisville as we speak. What, what is the wanton? Uh, what does that mean exactly? You're asking what the word wanton means? Yeah. I, I, to, to be honest, um, I, I had to Google it as soon as it came up where I was like, all right, cool. But it, it comes up with a bunch of briefings. It usually means something like unnecessary or unprovoked, but particularly in situations with regard to violence, like wanton violence or wanton disregard, wanton endangerment, things like that. Okay. So it's got a, it certainly has a negative connotation to it. I'm not entirely sure what this charge entails because this just came out. Right. I haven't had a chance to look Seconds look ago. It. Yeah. But this just came out. I'm not sure what Kentucky's laws are with regard to this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can look it up right quick if you want to keep talking. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I'm looking at some of the comments here on Twitter. Um, you know, uh, we talked about this in Ross Patterson Revolution, how uh, the algorithm for Twitter only shows me the people that I hate in life. And uh, that is probably on purpose. So I will respond. And uh, every single time I open it up. So right now, I, Joy Reid is one of those people. Fucking hate Joy Reid. Joy Reid hates gay people. Um, you know, fuck. We've all uh, seen the story when uh, she got popped uh, by MSNBC for those old uh, mm -hmm. blogs she used to write. <clears throat> and she talked about her hatred for gay people they seem to breeze over that now and uh, don't really care and they actually put her on in prime time at seven o'clock on msnbc but she's saying here um why aren't the other officers charged why weren't they charged for manslaughter um so this is this wanton endangerment is in the first degree um again i'm not really sure <clears throat> okay so here's here, it's it's uh 508.060 wanton endangerment in the first degree this is kentucky law uh, created in uh, 1974, effective January 1, 1975. A person is guilty of wanton endangerment in the first degree when, under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life, 
he wantonly engages. I love how they use the word and the definition. He wantonly engages <laughs> yeah. in conduct, which creates a substantial danger of death or serious physical injury to another person. So it'd be like firing a gun up into the air would be probably th- second or third degree. Okay. Wanton endangerment. Okay. Um, but yeah, basically he acted in a way that put people's lives in danger without regard for that. That's, that's the charge. Yeah, because a, a lot of people are trying to figure it out online. Um, uh, again, to, the protests have started. They've already are marching through the streets now and past police officers. And Louisville, I mean, we can already guess what's going to happen tonight. Mm. But uh, the interesting guy, I don't know who this is. Again, I don't even follow any of these fucking people on Twitter, but this is my feed. But Kari Sellers is saying, uh, for any... Uh, For an answer to to the many questions y'all have, no one is being held responsible for the murder of Breonna Taylor, just one person charged with firing a gun all willy-nilly. A $15,000 bond is a joke. Well, I mean, the charge itself carries five years in prison, max penalty, and a $10,000 fine. So if it's a max five years, you're not going to see a huge bond. It's just not how it works, unless the person is a demonstrated flight risk of some sort. Yeah, because look, a 15K bond, you're only paying usually 10% of that. So it's like, you know. 1,500 bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And you're out of there. He'll be out of there in an hour. Here's the the deal, though. By the way, for everybody that's going to go out and burn down your cities today, Mm -hmm. I doubt any of them are watching this show. But, you know, if you were watching this show, I would recommend uh, understanding what a grand jury is. So a grand jury doesn't have a barrier for entry for evidence. Like, you don't have... There's, there's no penalty for introducing everything. There's also no, like things that are inadmissible in a court of law are, are admissible in the grand jury, right? Right. Like there's certain things for certain reasons, even evidence collected under shady circumstances, the grand jury still gets to decide with that information whether or not they want to indict somebody or not. And there's a lot of information that came out actually today about what that grand jury saw mm-hmm. and why they made the decision they made. Yeah, and I, you know, as I'm reading this and, and, and watching it online, we, again, this is unfolding live for us, and uh, this episode will be up in a couple hours. Um, what, what's the real shit with this case? Because um, to me, you know, you see T-shirts worn by celebrities, uh, you see, you know, Instagram posts by celebrities, and all this stuff. Um, I've heard various accounts that she was dating a drug dealer, yep. and that was the guy who was wanted for. <laughs> Uh, who had the warrant on him. Um, she was with a new boyfriend when uh, there was the no-knock warrant at mm-hmm. the house that was issued. And then when the police stormed, uh, he started firing at them, and then they fired back and killed uh, her. Yeah, he, he fired one round that hit, I believe, one of the officers in the leg. Okay. And then people started firing back into the building and hit her, but not him. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Um. What's a no-knock warrant for the audience out there? A no, so a, a typical warrant, you have to knock on the door, announce yourself as police loudly, and then uh, you can go in, right? Mm-hmm. Like if they barricade or something, then you can knock the door down, but you have to knock first. Gotcha. Uh, a no-knock warrant means you can come straight in, like fucking SWAT style, smash the door in. And, uh, you, I mean, look, I, you still have to, once you breach the barrier, you still have to identify yourself as a police officer. Otherwise the person would be able to claim they didn't know and they fired in self-defense, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what this guy's doing, by the way. Um, and may, that could be true, by the way. I don't know. We, none of us were there. Right. The, cop, the cops said they did say it. The neighbors and the guy say he, they didn't. Mm-hmm. But of course they do. And of course they do. So who the fuck knows, right? Um, but there's all sorts of other shit going on. I mean, the bank account that this, uh, this guy, what's his name? Um, hang on a sec, Glover, her ex-boyfriend Glover, the drug dealer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bank account that he was using used her address, which is interesting. I mean, anybody could do that, I suppose. Although yes. you, have to, you have to show the bank proof of address when you register, when you file, when you make a bank account. And it's usually some form of utility bill. Utility um, bill or your, or your driver's license. Correct. That has yeah. that address on it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the leaked report say, says that on January 2nd, uh, the investigative team saw Glover pull into uh, a, a trap house uh, in her car, t- Breonna Taylor's car. Uh, the team was conducting surveillance at the home, which was described as a quote-unquote trap house, meaning drug dealing allegedly took place there, which is not, there's no allegedly, it definitely did. Yeah. Nobody refers to that as a trap house if there's not drugs there. Uh, the report included pictures of her car. And then there's audio surveillance of Glover talking to Taylor. And he says, you talked to Doug, question mark, who's uh, actually Adrian Walker. 
And she said, yeah, I did. He said he already, he was already back at the trap. So she referred to it as a trap house as well, ah, uh, which is interesting, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then... Uh, we never get the real stories uh, behind this shit, which is why I'm asking you. No, today. it's super it's super interesting, actually. I mean, I, I don't know how much bearing it has on the case. That's for the jury to decide at some point. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, it is super interesting. Uh, so she says back to him at some point under surveillance, uh, she says, when you're, not, when you're around, I stress more. Uh, I just always be worried about you. Not like you and bitches, uh, but just period with the police, like all kinds of shit. So she obviously knew that he was committing crimes on a regular basis. Right. Um, and, and all this is introduced to the grand jury, by the way, to establish a pattern. Like th- this, this narrative has been pushed that she was some innocent person that wasn't involved in this and that, that there's no reason for them to have ever come to her house. That part's clearly not true. Mm-hmm. Although that doesn't justify breaking in and shooting somebody's fucking house up necessarily right? right i mean when you get shot at returning fire is a natural instinct mm-hmm. but so we can get into that later but she definitely was connected to this whole situation there's no question about that um anyways so this guy usually or uh, regularly glover <coughs> uh the ex-boyfriend regularly had packages delivered to her home that he would pick up um the documents also alleged that back in 2016 the body of fernandez bowman was found in a car rented by Breonna Taylor. When the uh, local detectives arrived at her house, the questioner, Glover, was there. She told detectives she didn't know Bowman, that she had been dating Glover for several months, and that she let him drive the rental car. She also gave detectives her phone number, which was a number that Glover was still using as recently as February of this year, one month before she was killed. Wow. Yeah, so I don't know what happened. I didn't hear any of this. I don't know what happened. The media never tells you any of this, by the way. I don't know what happened with this Fernandez Bowman guy. Like, did anybody... Oh, that's... So, a warrant was issued on Octo, or August 26th for that guy's death against Glover, the ex-boyfriend. Okay. I didn't hear anything about that either. No. So, apparently, she had a dead dude in her car. Ah! And this guy, uh, Glover, that she's corresponding with, that was her ex-boyfriend that was a drug dealer, was apparently the person that killed him. Got, got it, it, got it, got yeah. it, got so, it. The documents also include copious amounts of transcriptions of recorded jailhouse phone calls made by Glover, several of which were made to the mother of his child. On April 24th, Glover told the woman, his, his uh, baby mama, who uh, is not identified, <clears throat> that, uh, quote, the, or, I'm sorry, that officers, quote, took my car, they got bank statements out the armrest, boom, it got Bree's address on there. So he was like, shit, they find, found, found out that she was involved in this. This is this really? is this is uh, recent, by yeah. the way. Uh, April twenty fourth. That's a month after she died. So, in, a, in another con- or what were you gonna say? You know what's interesting about like hearing all of this because this happened in the George Floyd case too, right? We didn't see the body cam footage from the cop. Uh, we didn't see that he was on drugs. We didn't know that he was on fentanyl. All this other stuff, right? Um, in today's world. There is no waiting for facts and seeing what really went on in, in a lot of these cases. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. this is the first time I'm hearing this. Um, you know, yeah. again, all you hear from is celebrities and you see the pictures and their justice. Yeah. And it's the one picture. They always use one picture that it's like they look their best and happiest and innocent and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Um, well, this has <clears throat> been pretty interesting so far, but this, this sentence is the really bad one, um, <clears throat> at least in my estimation. So... In jailhouse conversations transcribed on the morning of March 13th, just hours after Taylor was killed, Glover told the woman, meaning his baby mama, that Breonna Taylor had $8,000 of his money. And here's what he said. <clears throat> Bree got down like $15,000, uh, and she had uh, 8000 I gave her the other day, and she picked up another 6000 which is uh, bad math, by the way. Yeah. First of all, it's not 15000 uh, But... He's saying that that day that she was killed, she went to pick, or the other day from when she was killed, she was picking up drug money for him. Really? That's him. This is not, there's no analysis or opinion going on here. I'm just reading what happened. Of course. Right? This is him talking to his baby's mom, saying that this woman that got killed by police, like days before, had went and picked up $6,000 or uh, $8,000 worth of drug money from him. Mm Mm-hmm. And then another six thousand from some other person, right? Probably yeah. the guy Doug that they mentioned earlier, because that's the guy that he that they're always asking about. But sure. as a fucking investigator, you follow that lead and see what it is. But who knows? You know, if you're the police in this, right? What are you What are you supposed to do? 
uh, you, you're told to go and execute this warrant, right? Right. You pop in, guy starts firing at you, of course you're going to fire back at them. Uh, that is the instinct, yeah, but that doesn't always make sense. Don't shoot what you can't see. There's something to be said about suppressive fire if you're under constant gunfire. But one guy, I don't know how, what the time delay was. And look, these guys aren't warriors. They're police officers. They don't, I, I know this is a very different thing, but it depends on the amount of time between when the person got shot and then when they started firing back. Like if it was immediate, I guess, suppressive fire maybe. But if it was like a couple seconds later and then they started unloading, that's stupid, right? Because you don't even know what you're shooting at. Every, there's a saying, every uh, bullet has a lawsuit attached to the end of it, or every trigger squeeze has a lawsuit attached to the end of it. And that's why this guy's getting charged with wanton endangerment, is my guess. Because they looked at the facts of the case and like, yeah, you should not have done that at all. Hmm. Interesting. But man. it's definitely not murder. Right. Frankly, unless there's something that nobody knows yet and that seems unlikely because all, all these leaks yeah uh I, I just don't there's no way but it doesn't matter because everything's going to burn down either way yeah uh, which will lead me to uh you know my my next question for you here which is uh the democratic party with all the violence that's going on clearly it is it is hurting the polls this yeah. is the last thing that they want you know 40 days before an election yeah. um and again we are watching this unfold live in front of us right now They've already moved in. They've boarded up the cities, and uh, they've got past the barriers already, and we're fucking 20 minutes into this goddamn thing. Um, I, I wonder what's going to happen in Louisville tonight, and I wonder what's going to happen in the other cities tonight. Yeah. Because let's face it, no one is taking the time to read the actual facts the way that you just read them. Right, yeah, and it's, it's, you have to be able to process facts without judgment. Like you, you make judgments based on facts, but you read the facts as they are without applying your own bias to it. Now, of course, anybody that's a lifetime investigator or intelligence operator is going to start putting pieces together. Mm -hmm. But you as a, like, we, we've made the mistake a lot of times. Uh, investigators back in the day made it because they were stupid. Uh, but now people make it because they're lazy. But even in the intelligence community, there have been so many cases of people putting shit together that wasn't real. Like, you just, your brain creates this, like, oh, I think this happened. Think and know are not the same thing. And you can't operate on think. And it's, it's compounding as well. Let's say you've got five pieces of information. These two, for sure, we know who it is and we know where they are. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of this stuff is like, well, we think they know these people. We think they know these people. We think they know these people. That is a lot of evidence, mm -hmm. but three parts of it, 60% is, uh, is anecdotal. Like, you don't know that for sure. You're just guessing, right. basically, based on the circumstances. Maybe it's right, maybe it's not. But when each time you add another piece of unknown information, it's an exponential factor that makes your intelligence less likely. That's where these like, intelligence algorithms come up with the, like, well, we think there's a 60% chance that this is true. That's how, it, like, it's a weighted fucking algorithm. But uh, people refuse to do it. They yeah. also refuse to wait on the facts to come out. Like, uh, every, yeah, everybody's yeah. like, charge the police, charge the police for m months now. Like, it takes time to conduct this investigation. Right. Shut the fuck up. All, all of these investigations take time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we're, we don't live in a society right now where time is a factor. It is right now or it doesn't exist. Yeah. And uh, y people would rather overreact um, immediately than, than wait and have a, a thoughtful uh, plan or strategy regarding you know, protests and everything else. And, uh, well, man, the Democrats are in trouble now because yeah. they, they're fighting a war on two fronts. They're trying to fight the Supreme Court thing and they're going to try to have to fight off the bad polling from this violence that's mm -hmm. coming. That's going to be very problematic for them. I don't know what their plan is to deal with it. I mean, the, the, good, the biggest thing they could do right now is come out and uh, denounce violence immediately, tell their people not to do it. Right. right. But I doubt that's going to happen. They're going to come out and, and talk about the verdict or, or talk about the indictments instead, probably. Yeah. Uh, and again, leading with these headlines, especially with this, this wanton thing, or I, I know I'm mispronouncing that again, but uh, it, this is leading the headline and all this stuff as I'm reading it live. And it's like, you have dummies like myself. I don't know what the fuck that means, right? Mm -hmm. um, neither do the other people. I guarantee you 99% of the, the, the people who are protesting right now and about to burn shit down have no mm -hmm. idea what that means. Yeah. Um, but when you read something like that, it, that certainly doesn't help your, your case either for not uh, hitting the streets because you're like, well, what the fuck is that, dude? Yeah. You, you want to see murder, manslaughter, that type of shit, yeah. and, and you're not seeing that. Uh, and it's a, a lesser known charge that a lot of us don't know about. And, yeah. uh, uh, and you know, the top of Twitter right now says grand jury um, 
charges one officer with uh, wanton endangerment in Breonna Taylor case. And if you're looking at the keywords there, endangerment is there. And that is certainly not what they wanted. They yeah. wanted fucking murder charges against these yeah. guys and they didn't get it. Therefore, um, Louisville is in, is going to be in rough shape tonight. I have, I have a feeling, um, I'm curious about the other cities. So we'll see. We will see tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll be locked in because man, it is not going to be good. And, uh, you know, when all your hashtags are for the same thing, um, in today's society, mm -hmm. I, you know, I see a lot of Democrats on here right now asking for peaceful protest, yeah. which they were not doing that before. Um, obviously this is hurting their polling numbers and uh they've they definitely can't have the violence and, and shit burning down right before the election Not right this now time, yeah it's, no it's a bad look a very bad look um <clears throat> the other interesting thing that, that was uh that had popped up was you know the, the first debate is coming up in six days and um i tried to think of it earlier who was who was hosting it on a uh, ross Patterson revolution i blanked on the name but uh violence and racism they said is going to be a theme a uh, big theme in this upcoming debate here. Uh, this will certainly heighten it, mm. uh, whatever happens today. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Yeah, I, like in your opinion, what, what are cops supposed to do in something like this? Like, I'm not a police officer, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really you know, presume to speak on their behalf. But honestly, it's, uh, I know how it feels to feel like you're abandoned in the middle of a fight, I'll tell you that. Uh, a lot of guys do uh from the GWAT it's I, it's not a great feeling I, I don't know how you react to it I mean I know what I did I fucking got out as soon as I could um but you know that's that's easier said than done yeah and some of these cases people were building careers right it's it's something they've invested a lot into so I really don't know man um at, at some point if people like there's not enough police officers right even in major cities, in some cases, there's like one officer per 700 people or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if that's the deal, if people are just going to go ahead and decide to fuck everything up, what, what do you do? Like you can't fight them. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's when these states need to call in the National Guard. We'll see what Kentucky does. They did. So uh, <laughs> that, that is also breaking news. They have called in the National Guard and they've put in a curfew for 9 p.m. tonight that extends till 6 a.m tomorrow in that when the national guard is called in mm -hmm. uh what do they typically do is there a plan uh like at, at city hall like do they go over the streets and all that stuff because i'm assuming that when, whenever national guard is deployed to these cities <laughs> yeah. for incidents like this they don't know the geographical yeah, yeah. information regarding well no you get you get you get maps uh for sure ahead of time not always that uh, not enough ahead of time but you definitely get maps but my guess is what they'll be doing is just uh, setting up around the city and blocking positions to keep people out of key areas. Okay. Just to funnel traffic to the outskirts of the city more and keep people from getting inside and setting up. Yeah, because uh, as of last night, they had put some trucks uh, out to block off certain streets. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming for driving, but mm -hmm. I, I don't really know. Um, you know, clearly they knew this was this this verdict was going to happen today, and they already knew in advance right. what it was going to be, right? This isn't something that's just read live, no. and that's it. Um, yeah. Because b businesses were boarding up as of yesterday. Uh, these trucks were placed as of last night. And, uh, and then, you know, today it looks like they've already breezed through the barriers pretty, pretty mm. easily. So Yeah, it's, there's only so much you can do in that situation, to be honest. I mean, if people are going to go wild, there's really only so much you can do. Yeah, and, 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 and in a case like this, to me, I don't know what more the cops could have done either. You know? Um, you mean in the actual shooting part? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a tough one, man. Because uh, if that's your job and they tell you to, to go in there and, and, and execute this warrant, yeah. somebody starts shooting at you, what are you going to do? Um, also, if somebody fucking knocked down my door, I would fire at them. Oh, you know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tough situation. On both sides, on both right? Sides, yeah. That's why no-knock warrants are a bad idea. Yeah, is that because they, they, they talked about replacing them um, and they're not in a lot of states, correct? Well, yeah, no, they're not. And, and there's been talk of federal legislation on it, too. There are some instances where a no knock warrant would be uh, normal, like if somebody was being held hostage or if you, and you had to go in or something like that, some, something that had the immediate risk of life to it. But if it's just arresting somebody, I mean, you can, yeah, it's going to be annoying and cost more money, but you just wait outside. Yeah, I mean, they're less likely to have a, a gun out of their, like in their hands or out somewhere where they could grab it quickly if they're walking outside 
rather than sitting inside or get or or in their vehicle or whatever it is right Mm -hmm. like a lot of people like to do vehicle interdictions um i don't know i my favorite way to grab somebody is to follow them for a couple days and then snatch them up when i know that at their most vulnerable Mm -hmm. and that's that makes sense to me i don't think i don't like the idea of being quick in an operation like that quick usually means wrong when you're in the planning stage so i don't know we'll see we'll see we'll see what they like there may be some legislation that comes out of this on the federal level because they're they're, people have been trying for sure gotcha gotcha uh if you're in uh louisville pd stay safe tonight uh now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week this one was submitted by chris Terran from california says he's been a a member of drinking bros for two years and he's nominating uh vernon cody matthews uh i am nominating vernon cody matthews for being my first real friend after my family suffered multiple deaths in one year. Uh, He's just Cody to his friends, Uh, but he was one of my best friends in high school and always knew how to keep his head up no matter what. He helped me off that metaphorical ledge as a teenager, and I will always be grateful for that. Sadly, Cody has been missing from the Berkeley area in California for six years. His close friends and family have not given up on the search, even though all evidence has been destroyed due to fires and flash floods in that area during the search. Cody was a gifted musician, a skilled hiker, and a mountain man. Always one uh, to quickly make a joke and, uh, and make everyone around him knew, uh, know that uh, they could count on him for a smile. I do my best to carry on his legacy in my everyday life. Our last conversation was just after my 21st birthday, uh, and he said he owed me a drink. I'm going to hold you to that, brother. We all miss you. Um, look, cheers. Look, if he's a mountain man, maybe he's still out there. Yeah. Uh, no one would blame him for heading up into the mountains and getting away from all this bullshit. Not these days. Shit, man. If you could check out on society right now, mm. just go and live your life in the mountains. Um, watching Evan Hafer's fucking Instagram has made mm. me jealous. Jesus <clears throat> Christ. He's been fishing and hunting for yeah, that's a way to do it. months, it seems like, there. Uh, enjoying his life. Mm. He made some elk. Like, hey, maybe, maybe that's what your buddy's doing right now. You know? Maybe. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, but uh, if you have a, a Drinking Bro of the Week you would like to submit, go to drinkingbros.com. We've also got some butter soft teas mm. on there. Uh, if you want to support the show, they're only $19.99. We made them super affordable. And we're going to get some other items up there uh, quickly. Um, this is a bonus episode for this week. Uh, we were lucky to, uh, to have uh, the congressman <clears throat> on. And uh, look, man, we're going to keep giving you hits every single day, no matter what. And if, if there's going to be bonus shows, there's going to be bonus shows. Nothing we can do about that. And then D'Anthony and I finally get to do a college uh, football preview <clears throat> show knowing all the teams that are finally in it this year. And uh, they have updated all the odds for Heisman Trophy mm. on uh, mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will double your deposit. And we're going to go over those uh, today as well. So if you see two episodes pop up in your feed, uh, congratulations. Christmas came early. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Go to iTunes and rate the show a five star and leave a quick review. It'll help move us on up the charts. Good night, everyone.